Hey, what's going on? It's Jason Lucchese and welcome to the No Flipping Excuses YouTube channel. I am excited that you're here with us. We've got a lot to dive into. Alongside me is Mr. Jason Palliser. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm excited to talk about something that we used to do as bankers and I know what my opinions are on it, but I'm curious to see yours as well. So Absolutely. And we're going to dive into that here in just a second. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that are just here for your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't already become a subscriber, make sure you click that button below. It's that nice little red box uh, right below this video. And also make sure you click that thumbs up button. We would love to see some feedback from you. And I'm sure you're probably going to want to comment after we dive into today's topic. So Jason, like you just uh, talked about, we've seen this happen before. Yeah. And they're starting to have it come back again. So unbelievable. Crazy adjustable rate mortgages. But hold on, hold on. 40 year mortgages too. Do you think they might be putting these out there because of the high interest rates, the inflation, the debt ceiling getting all nutty. What, what's your take on this? Um, yeah, they're look, uh, we said in a previous video that mortgage applications are down because the economy is not in a good spot, right? And right. interest rates are higher. So mm -hmm. uh, for banks to make money, they got to come up with new ways to lend money and get people to raise their hand and say, Hey, give me some financing. Right. So, um, 40 year mortgage. It I does, remember it doesn't make sense, man. No, it does not make sense. Um, and then adjustable rate mortgages. Those are doing loans for a long time and, uh, banking for a long time and thousands of clients. The ones that got in trouble the fastest are the ones that had an interest rate that was set for a little bit and then it adjusted after a year or two years or three years. It was crazy. People are like, I can't afford my house. Like, so if they start doing on top of everything else going on, if they start doing this just to get more people funded and you know, what's going to happen. Uh, I know you know this, right? People are going to get a 40 year mortgage just so they can qualify for that house that they want. And they're going to realize pretty quickly, wow, I'm not making, I'm literally not making a dent no. paying this thing down. Like that's a, no, like the, the normal, that's almost like a financing death march in my opinion. Yeah. And like normally how it looks like if you're looking over a 30 year mortgage, that first 10 years or so is going to be like this. It's going to go interest, 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 interest. And then nine, 10 years, it starts going down a little bit. And then you actually start making somewhat of a dent into the principal balance of your mortgage. But with a 40 year, I can't even imagine when it starts doing a dent to your principal. And yeah. some of the secrets that we know, Jason, as being part of the mortgage industry is, you know, you do like the, you set up the biweekly payments because mm -hmm. essentially yeah. what it does is it allows you to have one extra mortgage payment at the end of the year without making any change. Correct. to your mortgage payment. And that all goes towards your principal balance, which is key. It goes mm -hmm. to your principal balance. So you could take a 30-year mortgage down to about 23 years, maybe 22 and a half years mm -hmm. by doing that. Yeah. And it saves you a ton of money in the long term because that's what, you know, six and a half, seven years that you wouldn't have to pay that interest. And that adds up to probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest that you would say, yeah, but depending now on, it's nuts. Yeah. Depending on the size of the loan you took out. So, um, what does that mean to you? Okay. So what does that mean to you as an investor? Here's exactly what it means. People are going, people are going to start selecting these type of loans. And when they do, um, I, I would literally, I would give it 24 months and I would pull a list of all, if I can grab the list or get it from a list curator of all the people that took those type of loans and I'm going to market the hell out of them. I'm going to market to them left, right, up, down, sideways, forwards, backwards, you name it. Just because... Hold on, was that a, was that a Contra code from the old Nintendo game? Yes, that was the secret code to unlock the extra lives. You're right. <laughs> um, but, having, but having said that, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow those people that took those mortgages. And I'm going to hit them up because I know they're getting nowhere. They're not going to get anywhere fast. And so I want to talk to them because they're going to, they're going to put themselves by, by just purely picking that type of product to, to squeeze some financing in. And it's going to put them in a pickle, especially the ones that, that, that go for the adjustable rate mortgages. I'm telling you, like 
90% of my clients that came back and said, man, I don't know what to do here. Um, picked an adjustable rate mortgage. And, I, and I'll tell you, when I was heavy into it, closing 40 or 50 loans a month, going crazy with it, I would try and steer everyone I could away from those. I'm like, look, I know right now it's going to save you. Uh, it's going to save you in the short term, you know, 300 bucks a month. But as soon as that first adjustment hits, it's going to be a rude awakening. Um, some of them were like a, a three uh, could just adjust up to another 8% within a five year period, which is th- th- that math doesn't work for people. No. And with, with the way that the treasury notes are trending right now, they're crazy high. There's the one that is basically the one that's the baseline for those adjustable rate mortgages is like close to 5%. Like when you and I were in the business, it was like 1.5 mm-hmm. to two and a quarter. Yeah. It's literally cl- more than double, Correct. which is, you know, if you're, if you're doing a baseline on that, say if you get an adjustable rate mortgage and that adjusts after like maybe three years or five years and that goes up three, 4%, Jay, that, that's an asterisk number that that's going to increase somebody's mortgage payment. Now, now, Mike knows this story. And Mike, do you want to pop your head in really quick? This is Mike's uh, 15 seconds. Whoa, there he is. Woo! There he is. So, here, so the, the deal with this is we did a deal for Paris Hilton uh, back in like 2005. See, Mike, Mike remembers. You remember the pay option arms? Oh, those are rough. So yeah. her, whoever handles her financing decided to do the pay option arm for her. Oh, that's right. And for folks that don't know what the pay option arm is, there's a, a negative amortization payment that you could choose from. So you get four, four options to choose from. Yeah, it was a pick a pay option arm, right? It was. Pick which one of the four payments you want to make. That's dangerous. That's Russian roulette. It really is. So <laughs> you had the negative amortization payment, which is the cheapest payment. You had an adjustable rate mortgage payment. You had an interest only payment. And then you had a 30 year fixed payment. Yeah, normal 30 year. Yeah. Yeah. So the manager decided, oh, well, Paris is just going to pay the, uh, the neg am payment. So on a house that was like a little over $2 million, she was doing a neg am payment. We, we tried doing a refinance hey, uh, for her. Hey, smarty pants, for those of you listening, a negative am payment means that you can choose the smallest payment because it actually is adding to the balance. Okay, so it's adding to the balance uh, if you make that payment. So you didn't put a single $1 dent in what you owe. It's actually increasing. So that's... That's why I said Russian roulette. That dangerous. It was so. You know, a year later, she literally added three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> to her principal balance by making that pay option arm payment. So, if we start to see those things come back, oh man, oh geez, that's that's Mike's gonna, even laughing off camera. That's right. good. That's gonna be a problem. So we're we're already seeing like these. Yeah. They did do the forty year mortgages a few years ago. Yeah. Stopped them, but. Now all of a sudden they're talking about having them back. And this is from the Inman News article that yeah. you know we're looking at, which you know the the link for that's gonna be below. And by the way, if you are liking this video, make sure you become a subscriber by clicking that button below. And if you're liking it so far, give us a thumbs up and tell us what are your thoughts right now. Drop a comment below. What are your thoughts on if they reinstate 40-year mortgages? And I know they have at some capacity adjustable rate mortgages, but what if they're fully on board again to where they were like what? Yeah, and let me do 15, a, 20 years ago. Yeah, so and let me do a public service announcement. If a hey, investors, if you are offered an adjustable rate mortgage, um, like on, on regular properties, regular single family properties, and you take it and you're barely cash flowing, I'm telling you, don't do it. You're setting yourself up for disaster once that first adjustment hits. We may be calling you, say, hey, do you want to get out of your property? Uh, I want to talk to you. I want to help you. I want to teach you. I don't want to talk to you because I'm going to buy your house because you chose an adjustable rate mortgage that balloons and skyrockets on you. And now all of a sudden you have an asset that you can't cash flow. Don't do it. Okay? Don't do it. Period. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that at all. The the adjustable rate mortgages are extremely risky. You never know what the market's going to play out to. Like Jason, you know, when people were taking out these two one arms, which means it's it's a two year arm fixed for only two years, and we also had a three year and a five year, 
And the two years were extremely uh, sexy because of the low interest rates. But after that, then you'd have a, an adjustable rate that changes on a yearly basis. We had some people come back and their rate went to like nine and a half percent. Yeah, and they can't afford it. And I, I equate that to if you've seen the and again, showing you my age a little bit. If you've seen the 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 TV show The Price is Right, uh, <laughs> the mountain climber. Oh yeah. Yo, Billy, 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 Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah, like adjustment. <laughs> He falls off. You, if you watch the mountain climber to the end, it doesn't end well for the gentleman. Okay. <laughs> well, unless you're an ace and you get him to stop. But yeah, that's true. That might not. That might not happen. Every yeah, time. it rarely happens. You get that? Like we do not want you to be the Price Is Right mountain climber. Don't do it. With that said, the the best course that you could probably take right now to get yourself set up is start following in your area that you're wanting to do business in as a real estate investor. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner all the way up to advanced. Start monitoring notice of defaults. Notice of defaults, they're rising drastically in the entire country. We're going to have additional videos showing you the data, the statistics behind it. But Jason, so following the notice of defaults, going to the county, getting that information, yeah. going and door knocking, talking to these people in person. Mm -hmm. And then may, what else? Maybe going to the MLS, looking for pre-foreclosures on there. You want to hit these people before they go to the REO auction. Yeah, yeah. You want to get there first. That's why, That's why. again, they're called NODs, uh, notice of default. Okay, so notice of default. Uh, that means that they've defaulted and, and sometimes uh, to the point to where it's filed and now you call that lead a pre-foreclosure. Before that happens, uh, there's, there's something called notice of default. Uh, sometimes depending on the city or county that you want to go after, it's hard to find, but do some research. If you can find those, those leads are bona fide. Those leads are golden, uh, because they've defaulted. You know that they're in a distress situation. You can hit them up before they become a pre-foreclosure, which other investors will uh, relig religiously go after pre-foreclosure. So if you can find a NOD list, we called it the, the, uh, pre NOD. It's like basically before you go to pre foreclosure, there's, there's a spot where you're behind before the bank says, I'm done with you. We call those pre NODs, pre notice of default, where there are 30 within the, if you can get that list, uh, that list is comprised of people that have been at least 30, 30 days behind on their mortgage in the last 60 days. If you can find, and if you can go online and hunt and find that list, uh, that is a very valuable list because you, you're getting there before the competition does. So that's something I would certainly look for. Yeah, I would recommend even looking at possibly getting uh, a list from a, a mortgage data provider. So you could go and say, hey, I want to, you know, find people that have these these rates, these mm -hmm. mortgage rates, these adjustable rate mortgages, these lengthy um, amortization schedules. So these 40 year mortgages, because they do exist, I think at one point in time, there was a lender offering a 50 year mortgage. Uh, I don't think it's it's there at all right now, but I would definitely start looking at that. You could really filter down, pare down and find people that are in distressed positions and start sending them off some mailers to see if they're interested in selling. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Yep. So I, I would definitely start attacking that. Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section on what you think with all of this. I would really like to hear your feedback because it allows us to craft and create new videos that are going to be helpful for you in the future. And are you attacking notice of default leads right now? Are you going after those folks? Are you making offers on listed properties that are in a distressed state? Let us know below. We would love to, to hear what you're doing as a real estate investor. Maybe we could provide some feedback to you that will help you and your business and add some additional commas uh, to your bank account. But other than that, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We would really love to have you here so that you could get notified of brand new videos from Jason and I and the entire team here with the No Flipping Excuses family. Make sure you give us a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed this video. And I'll be on the lookout for some comments from you. On the behalf of Mr. Jason Palliser and myself, thank you so much for tuning in to today. We will see you on the next one. Take care. See you, folks. Don't do it. No adjustable rate mortgages. <laughs> Bye. Bye.
Hey, go grab a copy of our brand new book. We would love to put this in your hands. The Art of Flipping Deals. You can go grab your copy today at theflippingbook.com. Make sure you head on over to theflippingbook.com. We'd love to get this in your hands today and show you exactly how you can get free exclusive inbound leads in your business today. Make sure you head on over to theflippingbook.com. Take care. Bye.